I'm about to start my day in the studio. I bought a few things lately at the art supply store. I thought I would start the vlog by showing you what I got. It might give you inspiration. One thing that I discovered lately are those oil paint sticks. I made a full review of the paint sticks. I really love them for expressive abstract work. I had only a red and a black and now I decided to buy a few different colors so that I could explore a little bit more. I've used them for expressive landscapes so far but I want to try them on portraits because it's a stick it lends itself to drawing and line drawing which is amazing but it's paint so it's a win-win. I have to say they're a bit expensive but I'm okay with it. I just like the way I could draw expressive lines with them. If you want to try them I suggest that you try one color just to see how you like it. For one stick I think it's about maybe six or seven dollars so that's kind of okay. Then you'll know if you want to go overboard like me. <laughs> One really cool and exciting thing that I got is epoxy resin. I plan to use it as a varnish for oil pastel. In case you haven't followed my oil pastel varnishing saga, I've tried many things. I've tried sprays, varnishing and mediums and different things. I've tested multiple techniques. Nothing really quite works for me when it comes to oil pastel varnish. This is my last effort into having something really permanent to seal oil pastel. So I'm planning to make a dedicated video on this in the next few weeks and let you know if it works. By the way, if you've never tried resin or you don't know what it's about, it's kind of like a gel, liquid gel substance that you pour over your finished painting and it will harden and give it the look of glass, like a glass encasing. It's super thick, super glossy and it gives a really interesting nice finish so um, we'll see. I also refilled my stash of the crackling medium chroma crackle it's called. I really love this stuff I've tried it many times. I still want to explore a lot more with it. It's also a little bit expensive but it's kind of manageable and it comes in smaller tubs as well if you want to give it a try. It gives such a wonderful unique texture, the cracking texture. I really really love it. I got a thick pad of watercolor paper. It's affordable watercolor paper because I want to do studies of probably floral, abstract floral patterns using ink washes and maybe watercolor. So I want to try many different things. So I wanted a paper that was affordable so that I could do a bunch of testing. I feel like this is a good option. I saw this six piece set of Faber-Castell pencils and I just couldn't resist. I wanted to compare them to the ones I'm using currently. The ones I've used for years are the Stettlers. So I just wanted to see what the difference was, if there was a difference. I guess a pencil is a pencil, but I was just curious and I'm always exploring to see if I could get better things. Plus a tin case is so nice and it's fun to travel with. In the same vein of drawing, I got charcoal powder. I've never tried this. It looks so cool. I've seen videos of people drawing really nice realistic portraits with charcoal powder using a brush. It looks very interesting, very intriguing. I wanted to get my hands on it and see how I would like it. I'm going to test it out and I will report back. This next one might be a little funny, but I have bought erasers. I saw a black eraser. I don't know what it's for. I have to do a little research on it. I wanted to compare different erasers because that's what I do. I try things. So I bought a few different erasers, one of which is an electric eraser. My understanding of this is that you use it to create highlights, not to erase per se. So you might want to create highlights on hair or things like that. The videos that I saw on it seemed very interesting and I want to try it for myself. This eraser was 10 or 11 dollars. I thought it would be a lot more expensive than that. So for the price, I think it's worth a try. I got this really funky palette knife in like a um, sales bin at my local art supply store. It looked really cool and I thought I could do interesting patterns and textures, especially for backgrounds and abstract work. I've tried this. I love it. I wasn't wrong. I really love the type of te texture it gives. 
And it reminded me that there are so many different tools to explore, especially in abstract work that could give unique textures. So I'm going to be on the lookout for that. For the past year or so, I've been watching Fran Menezes' work here on YouTube. She has a YouTube channel. You probably know her, Fran Earn. And she does a lot of illustration using colored pencils. I've been very inspired by her technique so I was curious to use my colored pencil that I've never really used that much in my own practice. I quickly discovered that a bunch of random colored pencil in a case was a nightmare to kind of look for the color you're looking for and to have them all spread out on a table they roll over all over the floor it's not ideal so I got this really cool pouch on Amazon it wasn't that expensive and it's very nice very practical I can order my colors neatly the way I want the pencils stay put they don't roll everywhere and I can get to the color I want really fast it's magical Speaking of colored pencils, I've really enjoyed these Prismacolor erasable colored pencils lately. Fran made me discover them because she uses them. So you can sketch with them and you can erase, which is amazing. I'm a very messy sketcher. I don't know if you're like me, but my sketches are really not neat at all. There's too many lines, too many bold lines. I get lost in what I want to draw. I over erase. It's a mess. And I find that with erasable color pencils, it helps me go over my final sketch and know what lines I want to keep, basically. I know I should be neater in my sketching, but bear with me. This is the situation for right now. I take a regular pencil for my initial sketching lines. And then when things get a little too messy and I have to kind of polish one specific area of my sketch I will use a different erasable colored pencil and it makes things manageable for me. I typically do that when I'm working on a sketch that I know I will be using to kind of transfer on a larger painting and when I want my sketch to be kind of more precise for the final painting. It's a really cool discovery. The way you know that it's an erasable pencil aside from the fact that it says it on the pencil is that there's an eraser at the top they have it in so many different colors they're really not expensive i think they're, i paid 75 cents each thank you fran it's a really cool discovery i made a really cool find at my local art supply store there was a section a clearance section for these beautiful luscious dry pastel they're thicker they're oversized they're so nice and colorful i think they were 50 percent off maybe more than that so i got a bunch of different colors whatever they had left because i felt like it was a, such a good deal i've never heard of that brand before but the salesperson at the store was telling me that it was a good brand that they performed really well and it was a good deal so i'm really excited to try them in expressive portraits you see a theme here i want to draw and paint expressive portraits in the next few months in large formats and try a bunch of different materials see what what i like and probably mix different mediums together dry pastel is something i've never really explored that much but I have a feeling I will love it because I love charcoal and it's kind of close. I think I may have showed this on a vlog, but the way I sort my pencils and pastels is by using like a cutlery rack. I think it's the best way that I've found to kind of sort my things, but still have them readily available, not put away anywhere. So I bought a new one, especially for my dry pastel. I'm really excited to sort them out and put them in my new tray. I think I'm gonna do that right now.
that was very satisfying and it's so inspiring to think of all the stuff that I'll be able to create with these. I'm really looking forward to experimenting with them for expressive portraits. I've tried expressive portraits in uh, charcoal mainly and I've tried using oil pastels with a few pops of colors here and there but mainly I've tried expressive portraits in black and white so it'll be my first attempt to discover new textures and incorporating colors in my portraits so I have a feeling that watercolor as a first layer mixed with accents of dry pastels would be lovely for portraits I just can't wait to try this. I also wanted to show you a new little nook that I created in my studio. It's kind of a zen little spot for me to set the mood for the studio. I have incense, I have a candle, and I also treat it as a source of inspiration for a specific series of painting that I want to create. I collected these pebbles and rocks from a place where I was born. My family is from um, a really small town in eastern Quebec. I've already done a couple paintings using some of these rocks. Basically, I pick a rock, I look at it, and I get inspired by the rock, by the patterns and the grain in the rock to create create a large-scale painting. It also makes for a really beautiful display. I thought it'd be nice for me to share it with you. Now there was a few things I wanted to test and finalize projects that I had started uh, in the studio. So I'm gonna start working on those. One thing that I wanted to work on was this painting here. I used cracking medium, the chroma crackle that I was talking about, but I used cheap white paint underneath. And I think that's the reason why it gave this like a big sliver of white, which I really love, but it made it come off the canvas a, a bit. It's supposed to be very secure on the canvas. There's The scales here are very glued down here. So this is how it's supposed to look. But here I want to repair this little bit. I'm going to use gel medium to kind of glue it back down. I also want to work on this edge here. Another bit that I wanted to work on was these abstract. I started doing some textures, experimenting with different textures. And I'm using canvas board for these because they're studies. And I want to incorporate some gold paint. So gold acrylic paint with the black and white see what I could get with it and see how I love the final finishes. I don't have a precise idea of how I want them to come out. It's more like trying different things and see where it takes me. And I often use the smaller pieces like this 
to explore and then create bigger ones. That was a really good day. I feel like I was very productive. I'm really happy that I was able to fix that painting. The cracking medium that was kind of peeling off, I was able to salvage it and glue it back with some gel medium. Now it's fully secured and I'm really happy. And I kind of like that there's big gaps in certain areas. It gives it like a grungier feel. I really like it. I love the edge. I gave it a softer edge instead of that sharp edge I had initially. This one turned out really great. As far as my testing with the black circle and the gold paint, not sure if I'm fully there yet. I think I have to test some more. The first thing I did was to try to get um, a gold contour line 
and I put a, a golden egg in the middle. I don't know how successful that one is. I'm still debating. I have to let it simmer and think about it. I might want a darker gold maybe. I'm, I'm just not sure. As far as the other two circles, I find that they're a little bit more successful. I like how subtle I was able to distribute the, the gold paint within the little holes that I created with that texture. I find it gives it a very organic like rock mineral kind of texture which is really interesting so I could keep that in mind and play with composition and maybe insert those types of eggs within a bigger and larger composition. If you've ever tried gold paint or metallic paints before within a composition of yours let me know in the comment how you use it. I would like to have new ideas because I feel like metallic paints can be used in a very interesting way but it can also be very clumsy really quickly just because it catches your eye so fast so if you have ideas let me know as far as my chroma crackle test of the two circles it's very conclusive the one with the very thick layer gave big scales and i think that's when you can get that problem of peeling off if the under paint is maybe not fully dry or if the under paint is maybe a cheaper kind of paint and the thinner layer gives a very dainty small cracking effect both are really nice i feel like in a painting i would probably have areas where i, I put big globs to have big scales and other areas where i would put like a very thinner layer to get that variation i think it's really interesting to see both and speaking of composition I had the initial egg already done a while back and I wanted to have an inukshuk. How do you pronounce that? Inukshuk? Not sure. Composition. So I added some yellow and different textures in the rocks. I'm not sure that that one is fully completed. It's probably 90, 95% there. I just have to leave it be for now and just come back to it later. I feel like I covered a lot of things today. I'm really happy about it. If you want more inspiration, you can watch this one next.